Hi everyone and welcome to Shukin Science. In this video, we're going to look at the big picture of cell respiration. So we'll talk about the main reaction that takes place as well as how it's divided into some smaller steps. We'll look at the mitochondria and where in that organelle each of those steps occurs. So to begin with, we do need to remind ourselves of the types of organisms that use cell respiration. And when you think of this process, the first organisms that probably come to mind are us or animals. And you would be correct. Animals have these really specialized organelles called mitochondria, which I have blown up down here. And you probably learned in middle school that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Man, I hate that saying. It's not wrong, but you know, it's just a little bit vague for the high school level. So mitochondria are the organelles where cell respiration occurs, specifically where ATP production takes place. And the reason why our cells have evolved to have these organelles is because they are super, super efficient at making this molecule. ATP is the thing keeping all of us alive right now. It allows our cells to do active transport. If you have muscle cells, it allows those organisms to contract their muscles and all sorts of other important things. And so yes, if you said animals use cell respiration to make ATP, you would absolutely be correct. However, if you've watched some of our previous videos, you've maybe noticed that plant cells also have these organelles. Yes, plants have mitochondria, so they too can do cell respiration to make their own ATP. Obviously, they also do photosynthesis. That's how they create their own glucose. But then sometimes they'll take that glucose and do this to convert it into ATP. So both plants and animals do cell respiration. In fact, any organism with a mitochondria does cell respiration. So eukaryotic cells, those are any type of cell that have specialized membrane-bound organelles like this, as well as a true nucleus. We call them eukaryotes. So that includes plants, animals, fungi, and little single-celled organisms called protists. So really, if we want to be correct, we would say that eukaryotes do cell respiration to make ATP. Okay, one more thing though. Technically, <laughs> every organism on our planet does this in some form or fashion. Although eukaryotes are the only ones with these mitochondria, prokaryotes also need ATP. Every cell on our planet, every organism needs ATP. Even those little bacteria that don't have mitochondria or nucleus or those specialized organelles. They just tend to perform a different version of this reaction, most of the time being anaerobic respiration. So yes, all organisms use cell respiration in some way to make ATP. For our purposes, we're going to focus on aerobic respiration. So that needing oxygen that's performed in eukaryotic organisms that have these mitochondria. So this will be the focus of our lesson, but we should keep in mind, technically everything needs ATP. Okay. So back to this reaction, this is not quite as simple as it seems. Although this is the overall reaction for cell respiration, it can actually be broken down into four different steps. The first step being glycolysis. So glycolysis doesn't even happen in the mitochondria. Glycolysis happens out here in the cytoplasm of the cell. And it is the only step out of the four that does not require oxygen. So actually all organisms do glycolysis in some way. And again, that process happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. 
which is why all organisms, even prokaryotes, can do that. Glycolysis creates a molecule called pyruvate, which then is used to fuel the next reaction called the linking reaction. And the linking reaction takes the pyruvate molecule made from glycolysis and modifies it further. And that takes place here in the mitochondria, but not all the way in the middle. It takes place in between the outer and inner membrane in a location called the intermembrane space. All right, so once that linking reaction has modified the pyruvate to create a molecule called acetyl coenzyme A, then that molecule can be used to fuel the third step in aerobic cell respiration, which is called the Krebs cycle. Now, the Krebs cycle is extremely complex. You can take a whole university course, essentially, on the Krebs cycle. Um, for now, we just need to know that the Krebs cycle occurs here in the matrix of the mitochondria. Yes, probably the coolest name ever in biology. The matrix is a fluid filled space, very similar to the composition of the stroma in a chloroplast. Hopefully you're picking up by the way on some similarities between those two organelles. And the Krebs cycle takes the acetyl coenzyme A created here in the linking reaction and puts it through a bunch of complex reactions to make a couple of molecules, which will then go on to, you guessed it, fuel our last step, which is the electron transport chain, or ETC for short. Now, the electron transport chain happens here along this folded inner membrane of the mitochondria. And there's a reason why it is so folded. By having all these curves and little indentations, that increases the surface area for the proteins of the electron transport chain. And because of this high surface area, the mitochondria is excellent at just pumping out ATP. It makes many ATP molecules with each of these cycles. And that is, again, because of the surface area of that organelle. So, by the end, we end up with some ATP, which then again, our cells can use to fuel all these other processes. As you can see, there are a couple of other byproducts that are produced during some of these reactions, which we'll get into in our next video. Thanks everyone.